Well, welcome to worship this morning at Box Hill Baptist Church. Whether you've been part of our community for many years, or whether you've mainly been just joining us now in this new way, you're all very welcome. And we hope we can bring to you, um, through the internet and its opportunities and its limitations, something that is encouraging and supportive to you. As you may see by the strategically placed palm tree behind me, it is Palm Sunday. So it is the beginning of Holy Week today. And Palm Sunday is a day which would normally be marked by loud, joyous celebrations um, of Jesus entering the city of Jerusalem uh, to cheers and adulation of the crowd. And yet for the first time in our entire history, we are doing this at a time when our cities across the entire world are quieter and more empty than ever before. And that's indeed something to reflect on as we enter this most important of weeks in the Christian calendar. We have brought together for you this morning a range of readings, uh, music, reflections, and some opportunities for prayer, um, which I'm delighted to lead you through. And we have even more for you in the week to come as well. And you can find that on our website uh, or our Facebook page, and the addresses should be on your screen now. And for our regular members, please stay tuned uh, for a special request at the end of the service in regards to next week's service as well. So for now, I'll hand this over to Pat, who's going to bring us our opening song. Psalm 118 I will give thanks to the Lord for he is good his steadfast love endures forever let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord this is the gate of the Lord the righteous shall enter through it I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. I will give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever.
ăn nơi mà thái chụp buộc đọc mà phải muối kho muối đó đọc muối kia ban một chất trong Jerusalem hay đó phun bẹp thật sẽ khang nông đam ô liu nút bê dì su trung chất sắc bì nẹ ai tử đôi bần tu thả cho tư ai phun nơi khang một nụ nẹ nâng khơi mê lia muối kê chọn tục nâng con viên nơi chỉ mùi khả nề cho sài đất viên một ai khả nhầm ba nẹ nà thả vầy ai nút trời trời thả bếp ông mà chắc trông trời ca nâng viên ruột kê nâng ai viên một hồi ta chẳng nít ta một đàm bay ai bàn xong rạch tam tùm nhì đa hào ra bàn kì tục một thả cho prap con sri siyon thả mơ sạch nây niên trung giêng một ai niên trung sụp hiếp hai cung lơ sạch lìa tư chìa tư chìa lìa chùm tuân đa chìa con rụt bọc mê lìa sức nụ có tư thư tam bằng cọp rụt bọc bạc dì xù hai non mê lia nâng con về một ruột kra ai khuôn lơ khá non thoai rộng cùng ai phô mà nụ tơ ta chẳng ơ bàn kra ai khuôn nơi phở lắc có cách mê chờ một rì tam phở phòng hai bàn đà mà nụ đà đà hai mục kraoi kê sài thà hô sa na đó là vùng luân đà vịt Để ông đà diễn một đòi Nơi bà niêm bà ông bà chắc Trung bà cọp đòi bà bồ Hô xa nà Nơi thang đọc vụ mùm phốt Rồi ca trung Diễn châu tới khăn nông cổng Jerusalem hỏi Nó có miên sạch đầy Chúa trường bình Khăn nông tì cổng Hai kê xua thả Lột ní diễn nẹ nà Svô mà nụ chai thả Nhi chi Tư chi hào ra dây xù Tại một Vì phùm nà xà rạc Sọc ca lì lê Nhi chi bè vần tù nè bè Ở con bè ông Act 16, 13-15 On the Sabbath day We went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshipper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptised, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. It's Palm Sunday. A day of processions of palm branches. A day when we celebrate Jesus coming into Jerusalem. And it's not only a religious festival. Some of you will remember of uh, decades ago that it was Palm Sunday where we always had the peace marches, the rallies, the demonstrations. It was a day for Christians and for all people to take to the streets to celebrate what was passionate and important for them. Now at the time of Jesus, this had already been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. Pilgrims would come up for the great religious festivals to Jerusalem and as they approached the gates they would say in their songs and their psalms various acclamations that reflected what they were doing. Open to me the gates of righteousness. This is the gate of the Lord. Now one scholar, Hans Joachim Krauss, translates that Hebrew word that we read as gates as portals. Now I find that fascinating. Because, as you probably know, the word portal has resonances within this digital age. It's through a portal that we go into the world, the, the virtual world, 
through the World Wide Web. Now Christian tradition has made much of Psalm 118. It's one of the most quoted in the whole of the New Testament. Let me give you some examples. The stone that the builders have rejected has become the cornerstone. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. But that tradition of temple worship is not the only tradition that we remember and affirm within the Christian church. In Acts 16, 13, we read this. On the Sabbath, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place, a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke with the women who had gathered there. Friends, this is a time for different portals, different ways of accessing each other and connecting together through phones and videos and letters. You may have noticed when I gave you the quotes from the Psalms that the language was very, very gendered. And that was intentional. I left it as it traditionally was, so that we might recognise the text more easily. But there was another reason. That temple worship itself was very gendered. Women could only approach as far as the court of women. It was very much a world that was authorised and managed and controlled by men. But the other tradition of worship where we gather by the river was one where women predominated. It was a time for women to meet, to perhaps do their work, to share their stories. Well, we are living through a time when we have to gather outside the gate, the gates of the churches and the official temples of the land. We meet however we can and with whoever we can. Just as Jesus and the early church fundamentally reset the Passover and pilgrimage traditions of the first century, this pandemic may well reset what we understand by public assembly and how we gather and meet together. What will public gathering and celebration and festival look like for the next few months and even for the years that follow this particular pandemic? Well, people are gathering down by the river from the margins or they are engaging with the mystery of this time from their cells of self-isolation. And in that alternative gathering, in that private reflection, they may well be sow sowing the seeds of what celebration and gathering will look like in the future. And that's exciting. As we enter into this week, Holy Week, when we think of the mystery of Jesus' reception and acclamation by the crowd, followed in just a few days by their hatred, vilification and condemnation, the tragedy and the pain of his death, and then the joy and surprise of his resurrection. We know that we are walking similar paths. There are many sufferings that people are having to engage. Some are literally walking the path to death. For others of us, there are many little deaths. As we reflect on this and follow Jesus this week, may we ourselves tread the path to Calvary, but also to the mystery of Easter dawn, when new hope, new life surprises and empowers us. May God be with you on the journey. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river 
to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down, come on, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. Let's go down to the river to pray. Psalm 122 says that we should pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Here is a photograph, uh, an original photograph of one of the streets of Jerusalem dating from around 1920. But it's not only Jerusalem for which we should be praying, but so many cities and places around the world where people are crammed together in close quarters where the risk of infection and uh, pandemic is especially acute. Today in our prayers, we want to pray for places like Gaza, where people are already in lockdown and have been for many years, for countries like Bangladesh and nearby India, and for more developed nations like the USA, where the pandemic is now becoming very serious. I'm going to interview now for you, with you, uh, Dr. Neil Parker, Neil was a medical doctor in rural Bangladesh for many, many years, then had a career as a public health official within Queensland and is currently serving as a Baptist minister. So Neil is going to talk to us a little about what is happening in Bangladesh and what the risks are in that particular country. My guest is Dr. Neil Parker. Uh, thank you for joining us, Neil, and we appreciate you making the time. Great to talk to you, Jim. The reason we're talking to Neil is that he's had three careers. He spent several decades as a doctor in uh, rural Bangladesh at Joy Ramkura. He then came back and had a career in public health in Queensland, and he's now in his third career as a Baptist pastor. Our reason for talking to you, Neil, is that we really would like to get a sense of the risks that the uh, coronavirus pandemic is presenting to Bangladesh and how we might intelligently pray for that country. Can you give us a bit of background, please? Sure. <clears throat> Bangladesh, of course, is one of the poorest countries. It's improving, actually, and since we were there, it's improved considerably. We now have over, oh, it's nearly 100% of kids start primary school, which is an extraordinary change to what used mm. to be. But it's a very crowded country. It's really the most crowded country in the world, unless you look at city-states. But in terms of big countries, um, 
think of 170 million people in an area two thirds the size of Victoria. Wow. And you've about got what we're talking about with Bangladesh. So crowds and the spread of the coronavirus don't go together very well, or they do go together too well. And well, I guess it's a case of when the virus hits Bangladesh, what is the condition of the health system in its capacity to respond and support people? Well, the latest WHO report says there are 54 cases and that's what Bangladesh would have reported to WHO. But of course, their health system is not the best. Their capacity for testing is not the best. So I suspect there's thousands of cases, in fact. And once it gets into, say, the slum areas in old Dhaka and the capital city, very packed conditions and people are just living right next to each other and there'll be no capacity for the social distancing. And then do think of the Rohingya refugees yeah. in the Chittagong Hill tracks. They'll be in refugee camps, which are not much good. Again, very crowded, more so than the rest of Bangladesh even. And people on the margins are really most at risk in these countries, aren't they? Yes. Besides the fact they're really close together, of course, health for a number of these folks will not be good. Nutrition won't be very good. And that makes people much more vulnerable to infections. What are the important things for us to pray for? How should we pray intelligently for situations like this, Neil? (sighs) It's very difficult, Jim. I I just think, God have mercy on Bangladesh. That's about how profound my prayers are at the present time. God have mercy on Bangladesh. Um, As you probably know, I am involved still through symbiosis and uh, our folk, our our, um, staff in Bangladesh are looking at ways to help. Our country director is, in fact, a doctor who had a very senior experience in the government service. Mm. So it, it's on our radar, but uh, a small organisation like ours and the huge issue that will be. So pray for people to have the capacity, I guess, to social distance as much as possible. Pray for the health system, which is not strong, but there are doctors and nurses, and Bangladesh does produce quite good quality doctors and nurses but the whole system is really uh, makes it hard to operate. Thank you, Neil, for your time. And thank you for your experience, uh, which will really help us as we seek to respond to this. Blessings thank on you and your church. Please pass on our greetings to the Toowoomba well, Baptist though. Church. And thank you for your interest in Bangladesh. It's very close to my heart. Now we're going to pray. Our prayers today are bidding prayers and they are simply We're going to show you a video of particular parts of the world where the needs are particularly acute at this time. There are going to be no words. The video alone will be the call for you to offer your prayers, your feelings and thoughts bound together as you offer to God your compassion, your concern, your intercession for the places that you are seeing on screen. We don't need to offer any words. We invite you in the quietness of these few minutes as you see this montage of different parts of the world, as you think of what Neil has just shared with you, and as you reflect upon what God is calling from you at this particular point. So shall we pray together as we simply watch these videos in quietness and make our own prayers to the Lord? Shall we pray?
Well, thank you for joining us today. We hope it's been encouraging and supportive to you and something that you can help support you through the week to come. Well, it's about to rain as I'm filming this on Saturday, which means it's time for us to end. However, before we do, I do have a small special request for our regular members. With Easter coming up next week, we'd love to see you all again in some form without breaking the rules, of course. So we'd like to invite you all to take a selfie, a photo of yourself, and send it to us at office at boxhillbaptist.org.au. That way we can bring all of our images together somehow in next week's service. Uh, it could just be a photo of you, it could be your entire family, your pets, whatever. And you can be as simple or as creative as you wish with it. We just really want to see us all together as we share the resurrection of our Lord together again. And with that, we'll close with a benediction. We have gathered with crowds crying Hosanna, because even if we were silent, the stones themselves would have called out. We have shared the hope for a world about to be changed, and then it changed. We have walked with another crowd, one that called words of scorn and condemnation. And now we follow the crowd as it leads out to the cross. And yet, even as the world grows dark, we cannot lose hope, because God is with us. God will be with us. Whatever happens, we are not alone. And so we watch the crowd, and we follow.